welcome back class uh, to our course uh, mechanical behavior of materials so uh, myself uh, professor sudhanshu sekhar singh uh, i am assistant professor in the department of uh, material science and engineering iit kanpur so till now professor sushan sekhar was uh, talking to you about uh, you know this course and he has already discussed uh, Uh, about elasticity and plasticity and he focused on the characteristics of dislocations right dislocation in traction forces of dislocations energy of dislocations etc so what i am going to do i am going to uh, discuss about uh, strengthening mechanisms right so uh, how dislocations uh, interact with other microstructural features present in the uh, material in any uh, given system okay and because of that you are going to increase the strength in that particular system so what are the different mechanisms uh, present uh, which can be used to increase the strength so we are going to discuss uh, from today okay so let's begin let me share the screen okay so uh, uh, so we are going to talk about um, methods of strengthening okay so basically suppose i give you a piece of aluminum okay pure aluminum and i ask you hey can you increase the strength of this piece this piece of aluminum right so what can you do as a material scientist you should be you, you must know what are the different methods are there to increase to enhance the strength of this given metal pure metal okay or say pure aluminum right so there there are different uh, mechanisms uh, to enhance the strength we are going to discuss uh, that also and in uh, other than pure aluminum suppose this is alloy then how do you increase the strength right so all these mechanisms related to increase in the strength of uh, a given alloy we are going to talk about it okay so basically what is happening uh, in in all the uh, strengthening mechanisms uh, the dislocations are going to play a very significant role okay so basically dislocations are going to interact with the microstructural features present in a given system and and these microstructural features are going to restrict the movement of dislocations and thereby increasing the strength of a given system professor sashan sekar must have told you right the one of the ways to increase the strength is to restrict the movement of dislocation and that is the crux here right somehow you have to restrict the movement of dislocations and thereby increasing the strength and that is what all mechanisms strengthening mechanisms are based on okay so what we are doing we are increasing the strength okay by restricting the movement of dislocation okay and when you do that you are increasing the strength of the material right so now the question is since we have to restrict the movement of dislocation they have to interact with some microstructural features right so dislocations can interact with many microstructural features and i am going to list all of them one by one and then i am going to tell you based on the interaction of dislocation with that particular microstructural feature what is the name of the mechanism okay so you have dislocation interaction with 
So dislocations can interact with different microstructural features. And the first is other dislocations. Okay. So dislocations can interact with other dislocations. Now in the driven system, you can also have drain boundaries. So dislocations can interact with drain boundaries. Okay. Then if we are talking about say alloy system, not pure uh, metal, Right, you are you are going to also have solute atoms present in the alloy. So dislocations can interact with the solute atoms. Okay, now in certain alloy systems, you are going to have precipitates present in the system. Okay, so dislocations can also interact with say precipitates. Okay. And we have one more, which is called dispersoids. So I'm going to discuss all of them, right? I'm going to also talk about what are different precipitates, okay? How these precipitates form, what are dispersoids, et cetera. Dislocations, you already know. Drain boundaries, you also know. Solute atoms, you also know, right? So we are going to discuss all of them one by one. Now, so if a dislocation is going to interact with other dislocations and thereby enhancing the strength of a given system, the mechanism is called as strain hardening. Okay, or we also call it as work hardening. Okay. Now, if the dislocation, dislocations are going to interact with the drain boundaries, they are getting piled up at the drain boundaries and thereby enhancing the strength, this mechanism is called drain boundary strengthening. Okay, now the third one is solute atoms, right? So I mentioned that whenever we talk about alloys, there might be some solute atoms, right? In the system, right? So these solute atoms are also going to interact with the dislocations and thereby enhancing the strength. And that particular mechanism is going to be called as solid solution. Strengthening. Okay, now if dislocations are interacting with precipitates and thereby increasing the strength, the mechanism is called precipitation strengthening. Okay, and the last one, now you know, right? This, this is going to be called as dispersion strengthening. Okay. 
So again, I am reiterating, right? That what is happening, the dislocations are going to interact with these microstructural features present in a given system. And thereby the strength of that given system is going to be increased, right? And depending upon the microstructural features with which dislocations are interacting, the name is given like that. So if it is in dislocations are interacting with the other dislocations, we will call it as strain hardening or work hardening. If dislocations are interacting with the grain boundaries, we call it grain boundary strengthening. Okay. And if this and say similarly, right? If precipitates are present in a given system and dislocations are in, uh, interacting, then we call it precipitation strengthening. But again, remember the trust is that you have to restrict the movement of dislocations to increase the strength and all these microstructural features, right? Whatever I have listed here. So all these microstructural features are actually going to restrict the movement of dislocations. And that's how they are going to increase the strength of the system. Okay. So now we are going to talk about all of these one by one. But uh, today I'm going to start talking about precipitation strengthening. Okay, so let's talk about precipitation strengthening first. Okay, so precipitation strengthening is also called as sometimes air hardening. This is also called as age hardening. Okay? And I will tell you why this name is given as age hardening, especially for aluminum and SP. So we are going to discuss about this. So now this precipitation strengthening mechanism is a well-known strengthening mechanism, right? For enhancing the strength of aluminum alloys okay so in in the lecture what whatever i am going to explain we are going to mostly focus on aluminum alloys and then we'll try to understand right the underlying concept of this particular mechanism again based on mostly on aluminum alloys okay so now suppose you are uh, you have flown through you know aircraft right so Aircraft, uh, in the aircraft, there are many components which are made of aluminum alloys and typically uh, some of them are going to show precipitation strengthening also. Okay, so uh, suppose I take a piece of aluminum or that particular component or alloy which is uh, used to make a component of aluminum alloy and which can show precipitation strengthening. Okay? And I start polishing it so that I can observe the microstructure. Okay, so you start polishing it and then you etch it and you, then you take the sample to an you know, opt optical microscope, right? And if you do that, you're going to see a microstructure what I have shown here. Okay, the first one. So this is a typical microstructure of an aluminum alloy which has been rolled and that's why you see L and S and T here. So you see L s and t here you are not required to go through the details but let me tell you so it, since this has been rolled the l direction is called as longitudinal direction and t is called transverse direction and the, along the thickness right so if it is a rolled so you have this roll plate right so along this direction the vertical direction this is s so we call it short transverse in the direction where it has been rolled along with uh, it, it has been rolled, we call it longitudinal direction L. And then this direction, right, will be called as transverse direction. Okay. And this is the typical microstructure here I am showing for aluminum 7075 alloys. So 7075 alloys is 7 series is uh, uh, one of the uh, series of. Uh, uh, aluminum alloy okay anyway uh, we will not go into that much uh, details about all the series uh, 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 a list of series for aluminum alloy 
Okay. So what you see typically here is if you see an optical microscope, you are going to observe uh, um, drains. So you can see all these drains here. Right? So you can see drains here. You can see drains here and all these right? drains. Then you can also observe these inclusions. So these dark particles, what you see, we call it inclusions. Okay. So these inclusions in 7075 aluminum alloys are silicon rich or iron rich inclusions. We don't want them, but they will be present in the aluminum alloy. Okay. But what I wanted to uh, inform here is see the my, uh, scale bar here. Right. So this is 300 micron meter. Okay, now if I start magnifying right, this microstructure, what I am going to observe is what I have shown here in the second image. Okay, now see the scale bar here. This is 500 nanometer compared to the scale bar in the first image, which is 300 nanometer uh, micrometer. You can see a very fine particles, right? All these particles. You can see all these particles, right? So these fine particles, which you are going to observe at high magnification in aluminum alloys, we call these particles or phase as precipitates. Okay, so in aluminum alloys, you have to go to high magnification to observe. So this is actually a TEM image, transmission electromicro. Transmission electron microscopy image, okay. And this is your optical image. Okay, so you understand the difference here, okay. So that's how, that's, that's why I mentioned here, decreasing length scale. So you are actually decreasing the length scale as you move from an image from optical microscope and then image from TEM image, okay? So typically in the case of aluminum alloys, you might not, uh, you are not going to observe uh, these precipitates. These are in nanometer size, okay? So you have to use TEM to observe these uh, small precipitates. Now these precipitates, which are very, very fine, they are going to restrict the movement of dislocations and since the movement of dislocations is restricted, you are going to increase the strength of the alloy system. Okay. And that's why the name is given as precipitation strengthening or precipitation hardening. Okay. Because you are using these precipitates to increase the strength of a given alloy system. Okay. So now you know the size of the precipitates are very, very fine. Okay. Now the next question uh, uh, is, uh, you know, how do we generate these precipitates, right? Can all the alloy systems give you, especially in aluminum alloys, can every aluminum alloy will give you precipitation strengthening, right? So we will discuss that now, okay?